What happened before this all originated? What's outside the universe? Defined it, by zero. Okay, so it's not it's not relevant, not understandable. Is it useful to even ask the question? No. To, to, to because it's so hard. No, it's not hard. It's just not a question. If I can't do an experiment or even think of an experiment, the question doesn't exist. Well, no, you can't think of a lot of experiments. No offense. I, <laughs> I, what I mean is, if I can't, because your causality graph is like this is what we've been talking about. It's like um, what, there is limits to your ability to construct experiments. I, I agree, but I'm, I'm, I was trying to be facetious, and I'm trying to make a point. Is I think that if you, if there is a causal bottleneck through which information can't propagate in principle, then it's very hard to ask to think of an experiment, even in principle, even one that's beyond my my mediocre um, intellect, right? Which is fine. I'm happy to accept that. But this is one of the things I actually do think there was something before the Big Bang, because I'm I would say that I think the Big Bang just couldn't occur and create time. Time created the Big Bang. But uh, so there was time before the Big Bang. Yeah. There was no space, but there was time. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I'm just making that stuff up just to make all the physicists happy. But I think it's it, 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 that would you think that would make them happy because they would be quite upset, actually. And why would they be upset? Because they would say that ta like time can't exist before the big. Yeah, bang. I mean, this goes back to an argument that you might not want to do. Have the argument here. I I was talking to Sarah earlier today about an argument we had about time a long time ago, yeah. <laughs> long time in time, and what I would. I, it's like, I think there is this thing called time or state creation. The universe is creating states and it's outside of space, but cr they create space. So what I mean is you can imagine there are states being created all the time. And there is this thing called time. Time is a clock, which you can use to measure when things happen. But that doesn't mean because you can't measure something that states aren't being created. And so you might locally refer to <laughs> the Big Bang and the Big Bang occurred at some point in when those states were there. Probably there had to be enough states for the Big Bang to occur. Um, and then, but I, I, I think that there is something wrong with our kept conception of how the universe was created in the Big Bang um, because we don't really get time. Um, because again, you know, I don't want to become boring and sound like a broken record, but, but um, time is a real thing. And until I can really explain that more elegantly, I'm just going to get into more trouble. Than... Well, we're going to talk about time because uh, time is a useful measuring device for experiments, but also time is, a, is an idea. All that, okay. But let me first ask Sarah: Is like, what what do you think? Is it a useful question to ask what happened before the Big Bang? Is it a useful question to ask what's outside the uh, universe? So I would think about it as the Big Bang is an event that we reconstructed as probably happening in the past of our universe based on current observational data. And so the way I like to think about it is we exist locally in something called a universe. Um, so, and, and going back to like the physics of existence, we exist locally in the space of all things that could exist. And we can infer certain properties of the structure of where we exist locally. And one of the properties that we've inferred in the past is that there is a, a thing we call the Big Bang. There's some signatures of our local environment that indicate that there was a very, um, low information, uh, event that started our universe. I think that's actually just an artifact of the structure of the assembly space that when you when you start losing all the memory in the objects, it, it looks mm -hmm. like what we call a Big Bang. Um, so I think it makes sense to talk about where you are locally. I think it makes sense to talk about counterfactual possibilities, what could exist outside the universe, in the sense that they become part of our reasoning and therefore part of our causal chain of things that we can do. Um, so like the multiverse in my mind exists, but it doesn't exist as a multiverse of possible universes. It exists as an idea in our minds that allows us to reason about how physics works and then to do physics differently because we reason about it that way. Um, so I always like to recenter it on things exist, but they don't always exist like we think they exist. Um, so when we're thinking about things outside the universe, they absolutely exist because we're thinking about them, but they don't look like 
they don't look like the projections in our minds. There's something else. And something you said just gave me an idea to go back to your question. If there was caught, I mean, some, if something caused the Big Bang, if there was some memory or some artifact of that, then of course, it's, to answer your question, it's worth going back to that because it, it, that would imply there is something beyond that barrier, that filter. Yeah. And that's what you were saying, I guess, right? right? I'm but, agnostic to what exists outside the universe. I just don't think that, like, I think the most interesting things for us to be doing are finding the explanations that allow us to do more, like like yeah. that optimism. So I tend to draw the boundary on questions I ask as being scientific ones because I find that that's where the most creative potential is to impact the future trajectory of what we're doing on this planet. It's interesting to think about the Big Bang is basically from our current perspective of what we're able to detect, it's the time when things were forgotten. Yes. It's the time of the reset mm -hmm. from our limited perspective. And so the question is, is it useful to ever study the thing that was forgotten? Um, <laughs> or should we focus just on the, on the memories that are still there? Well, the point I was trying to make about the experiment is I was trying to say both things. And I think perhaps, yes, from the following point of view, if you could then imagine what was forgotten and then work forwards, you will have different consequences. So then it becomes testable. So I'm as long as we can find tests, and it's definitely worth thinking about. What I don't like is when physicists say what happened before the Big Bang and before, 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 without giving me any credible mm -hmm. um, conjecture about what we would, what, how would we know the difference? But the way you framed it is quite nice. I like that. It's like, a, what, what have we forgotten? 